Wait. Are you not going for to, uh, to take a photo of me? <laughs> That's why, yeah, yeah. Taking it right no, no. now? Uh, I have to this give one. a natural, uh, no, a natural fingers with this one. Oh, okay, natural, <laughs> neutral fingers. Neutral fingers. You're not allowed to give yeah. any give one, one, two, two three, or three, or three, four of them. Four or five. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to take, uh, to capture a moment. <laughs> why? From these beautiful uh, flowers, mm -hmm. you know? Why? It's not easy, actually, not easy. to capture, I mean, yeah, because there are some of our iPads. Yes, yeah, your iPad. Tabs. Uh -huh. Tabs. It's not easy at all, by the way. So hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to the Java New Show. We're trying to. Uh, we've been trying to capture some nice pictures, beautiful pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not even an artist pictures. Yeah. I mean, a good uh, object. Yeah. When you take a picture of it, sometimes the result is not as beautiful as the object itself. Exactly. But it can also turn out more beautiful than it, or depending, very sharp. Depending who's taking the depending picture. Depending who's taking it. So you can imagine if you do that under the water. Oh. So how much effort a photographer must put into capturing beautiful moments such as beautiful waves. It must not be a, an easy task. So we are now connected with a South African Ocean photographer, Terence Peters, to know how he manages such a task. Yes. Hello, Terence. Hi, Terence. Hi, everyone. How are Wait, you? First of all, thank you for joining us um, in our show yes. today. And um, before we dive further, I would like to know more about you. You describe yourself as an ocean photographer, right? And um, you have almost 800,000 uh, followers on Instagram, if Ooh. I'm not mistaken. So 700 something. Yeah. Uh, your account is orangerocks.za, right? So, first of all, please explain to us what is an ocean photographer and how did you get started with this? So, ocean photography can mean a few different things. My uh, specific genre of ocean photography is waves. So, I actually take my camera into the water and I wait for the perfect moments of the wave coming past me. And I usually line that up with the sunrise because adding those two elements together just create the most unique pieces of art and those moments will never repeat themselves so it's endless possibilities when when photographing the waves in the ocean and so the, and the one behind you behind, is just yeah. one of the examples of the photos you captured right yeah. amazing one of the ones that I'm I really tried very hard to capture because I've tried to line up the sunrise with the curl of wow. the wave which is basically impossible but for some reason, it all lined up one day, and mm. I, I managed. To, I, I, I thought something. it was yes. I thought it was a painting. Your yeah. photograph, your result of photography behind you. Many people think that they are paintings. Yeah. Mm. So uh, you traveled uh, around the world to have pictures with waves and uh, the light, the sunlight. So I, I have traveled the world, but actually, funny enough, I didn't travel um, taking photos of the ocean. I was actually on the cruise liner as a photographer before mm. I got into ocean photography. I worked on the cruise um, cruises and I was taking, you know, the general photos. So that's also um, a big uh, part of my life is that I was on the cruise ship and I was taking photos of normal things like um, people and events. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that's how I also started photography. So when you became a, now you become an ocean photographer. So what are the hardest challenge or any unique challenges that you face throughout your journey in taking pictures of the waves and yeah. the perfect lineup? Yeah, there's actually quite a few challenges. Um, some of the obvious ones are because it's sunrise, I would have to wake up now in summer in South Africa, I'm waking up at 3.30 in the morning mm. to make it in time for the sunrise because it's not just getting down to the beach that I have to be in time for, but I have to put my wetsuit on, I have to get all my stuff ready and then swim out into the ocean all before sunrise. So that's one of the challenges because, you know, everyone loves their sleep and at that time it's... it's hey, everyone loves like to sleep. Sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And another challenge is uh, I've been part of the ocean since I've been six years old. Mm -hmm. And when I first swam into the ocean with my camera, I, it was so new to me. And I, I almost thought I made a mistake by getting this underwater camera and everything because it was so challenging mm. to tread water with a camera because you can't really use your arms. You have to just use your legs and you're kind of oh, at the mercy wow. of the 
the ocean. So you need to be really comfortable in the ocean before you yeah. take up something like that. Mm. Yeah, I do agree with that. And I love the keyword that you, mm -hmm. you need to be more comfortable, comfortable. first yeah. with the ocean. Because sometimes yeah. for a lot of people, it's been something uh, scary, scary yeah. or maybe creepy, maybe when you talk about the ocean and talking about um, uh, your masterpiece behind you. So please elaborate more about the story of the photo. Where did you, where did you take it, and what gear actually do you use? Uh, did you use at a time? Mm. Yeah, any specific so, uh, camera photo? Did you? Yeah. Use? So um, to take this photo, um, it was just down at my nearest beach, and the beach is called Lucian Beach. Mm -hmm. And and I jumped off the rocks, and it's not really a place where anyone swims. It's Oh. kind of messy the waves are all over the place and the reason why i chose this spot in this particular time because it was during winter and in winter the sun rises in a different angle than it mm. does in summer mm -hmm. and when it rises in uh, winter you can almost line it up perfectly with the curl of the wave and i actually the funny thing about that photo is that i told my friends a few days before that happened that I will one day capture the sun inside the curl of the wave. Mm. And little did I know it was going to be the next day that that happened. Wow. So it's very special to me. But you and, have a very um, specific target already. Yeah, exactly. And mm. and the settings you need, you would have to have a very fast shutter speed for mm. it to capture it perfectly like that. Mm. So anything mm. a thousandth of a second is what you need to capture something like that in its, in its tracks, you know. Yeah, so I was going to ask what season it was. I mean, uh -huh. what season was it the best one to, for you to capture it? So it was winter time. No, it's always going to be winter, especially ah. in the South African coast where I'm from, KwaZulu Natal. Winter, the oceans are usually really pristine, and the the sunrises get so so colourful, and mm. it also just lets me sleep in a little bit more. So because sunrises at about six thirty seven mm. instead of four thirty. It is amazing to uh, find out how specific his genre, if I may say, yeah. Yeah. genre of photography is. Because at first, when I was uh, reading uh, the rundown and I saw, oh, we are going to be interviewing an ocean photographer. So I thought, I immediately thought that you are the one who is going underwater yeah, to, the you diving. know to capture uh, the underwater world. But, oh, I just found out that there's actually such thing as wave photographer specializing yeah. in sunrise. That is amazing. But, exactly. but do you actually limit yourself uh, into just doing that? Or are you open to other things, to photographs at the moment? Oh, I'm definitely open to going under and taking that. But I think as a photographer, you really need to hone down on one niche to stand out in the first place. Right. And once you've created like a, a whole unique um, spectrum of photography, then you can kind of bay into different areas. But like you said, when someone thinks of ocean photography, you your mind immediately go down to the, the animals and underwater and <laughs> coral reefs and stuff. And because I was a surfer, waves were the most important thing about the ocean for me. And because how beautiful they actually are. And so many people will never be able to experience waves from inside the water, especially during sunrise. So uh -huh. it is a very big niche to, to go into. Uh, can you tell us a little bit the difference of challenges you experience when you go underwater and when you're photographing waves? Because um, I once joined a group of uh, underwater photographers and um, I noticed that some colors disappear, right, as you go further down. Uh, can you tell us more about it, as we have limited knowledge about that? Yeah, no, sure. So the further you go down deeper into the ocean, obviously the less light reaches down there. I think there's a certain depth that you go to that there's actually zero light. So light creates color. So everything that you see is because there is light. Yeah. So once you go down and it gets darker, you're going to need different kind of um, settings on your camera to bring those colors out. And you actually use, if I'm not mistaken, you use like a red filter onto your camera so that the colors look as they should. Otherwise, they would be completely too blue because yeah. of the the, the the minimum light that is actually entering those dark areas. Mm. And of course, above the water, the waves, 
they are getting direct sunlight and that is mixing in with it. So for instance, if it's a, one of those orange kind of glowing uh, sunrises and it mixes with like a greenish tint water, you get a whole different kind of purpley look. So it's all these kind of different colors that mix with each other, which is very important for what I capture. Wow, apart from those colors and the difficulties, I can only imagine how freezing it is, like the really early in the morning to capture that beautiful <laughs> moment, right? In the winter as well. Yeah, in the winter, exactly. So now, are there yeah, any... So... Yeah, please go ahead. So um, where I'm from, actually, the water isn't too bad. Uh, it oh. is chilly, it is a cold, but it's not like um, freezing temperatures. Mm. What does get cold is the temperature in winter. Like, mm. it, it, you do need a full wetsuit and you do need to be a little bit brave to go into the water at that time, yeah. I think Indonesia would be the perfect place for you yeah. to live because Try it's warm all year. Yeah, throughout the year. <laughs> so is there any specific ocean-related environmental issues that you want to promote, for example, through your photography? Uh, of course. So I've had I've had this question before, and there's so many of these um, agencies and stuff that promote to save the ocean stuff, and that's very important. And the way they promote it is they show the um, destruction and they show all those bad images of the of the of the ocean, which mm. is very good for some people because it will make them act straight away. But I know from personal experience that if you see those heartbreaking um, photos and videos of how they treat the ocean, most people just turn a blind eye because it's too hard to, to imagine and too hard to deal with. So they, they forget about it. They don't want to look at it. So my approach is to show the beauty of it. So when they see the beauty of the ocean, you want to protect something that you think is beautiful. Like mm. automatically when you see something yeah. beautiful, you yeah. will find out that you actually want to protect it because everyone inherently knows that the ocean is getting destructed. Mm -mm. So when you see something beautiful, you're going to want to protect it. And then of course, our, it's my responsibility to have in the fine print about how you can um, start protecting the ocean. And it all just starts basically at your household. So the cleaner you are at your home and with your um, dispense of your water, how you treat your water and your taps, mm -hmm. the better it is in general. I really like that positivity. And I think he set the camera lens really correctly. Yeah. That's really great. And talking about how to set the lens correctly. Ooh. So please, uh, Terence, uh, elaborate more about the technique. What technique uh, do you find most effective in capturing the essence of the ocean? So, um, the best way to capture it, in, in my opinion, if you want to start out, um, firstly, I think if you want to be an ocean photographer, I think you need to be comfortable as a swimmer in the ocean. Not just a swimmer in general, but in the ocean specifically, because you don't want to be caught in the current when you don't know what to do. And then secondly, you know that a lot of these new phones that you get are so, so good. So it's really beneficial for you to start off with a small camera like a phone and you just get a case for that and you start going into a swimming pool and then you can start going into um, shallow oceans and that's how you can start off. And the settings on the, on the cell phone are all automatic. So it, it's really the most basic way you can start. But in my opinion, it's mostly important to be uh, comfortable in the ocean before you start uh, a career like this. Mm. Again, the very start point is the comfortable things. Yes. And thank God for technology, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Terence, earlier I mentioned that Indonesia would be the perfect place for you to live and capture all uh, these sunrises and yeah. the oceans as well. And we know that Indonesia is full of beautiful spots everywhere. Um, do you Come. have a plan to visit here maybe someday? Or have you in the past, perhaps? I have actually, and, and it wasn't um, on the cruise liners. I actually went in 2009 as a surfer and I went mm -hmm. to Bali. You were? I enjoyed so. uh, the waves there as a surfer and I, I absolutely loved it. I loved being in board shorts and a short t-shirt <laughs> and it would rain but then it would be sunny and it would be hot and it was just, it's very similar weather to what we have here in summer so i would be very i'm very much looking forward to visiting indonesia again maybe a different island now and yeah yeah it's definitely i think it's the most beautiful i love the people i love the food um the scooters are quite intense but um it's a whole different life there and i love it
Yeah, we have a different types of curls here in Indonesia. <laughs> so you yeah, better you yeah, explore <laughs> that. So where can we find your, your uh, creations? your photographs so i mean are these for sale or do you keep it somewhere safe so it's you know very limited people can see how do you treat so, your uh, masterpieces so i do have a few of my uh, images for sale but a lot of the time i keep them like hidden for hmm. until i'm happy to release them wow. but if people want to find my work um you can, it's just Orange Rocks and you can Google Orange Rocks Ocean Photography and you can either choose Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or YouTube. I'm on all of them and they all show a different kind of um, process of how I do it. Like Instagram is all my photos and some videos and stuff. And then YouTube would be actual videos of my work. And yeah, you can just visit any of those. And if you want to purchase one, you can do it and I the ship around the world and it's available to everyone. Oh, I mean, what's what's your next challenge? Is it for perhaps like the wave with the sunrise when it's having an eclipse or something? I mean, is there any challenge for you in the future? Oh, yeah, definitely. So my goal is still to get a dolphin jumping through the mm. wave during oh. sunrise because I've actually seen that moment many times before as a surfer. But now when I have a camera, it's kind of eluded me for a while now. I've seen it even with my camera in my hand, but it happens so quickly. So you oh. need to be really, really sharp at the time. But that is probably a bucket list photo as a dolphin jumping through the wave during sunrise because being around in the ocean during the dolphin swimming around you is the most beautiful thing you can ever experience. And I just want to capture that so I can show people what, what nature can actually provide you. Wow, wow. Uh, last question for me. For me. <laughs> um, how do you decide which uh, photograph goes on sale and which one you keep hidden? <laughs> That's a good question. So um, I take anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 photos per session and maybe five to 10 photos make it to a, a a folder and out of that folder i would only choose one or two to make it into the print store because believe it or not 95 percent of my images are unusable because mm. there's either um, water on the lens or um, i've been moved out of position so it's it's out of frame or it didn't capture properly because it's like you said like i'm dealing with an environment that's moving constantly so i can't just sit perfectly in one spot and capture waves i'm constantly fighting the current going under waves holding a heavy wow. camera and not to mention that the sunrise it, i mean it keeps rising you know so those beautiful yeah. colors only last about 30 minutes and then the sun's too high and mm -hmm. then it becomes it's still beautiful but then it's more what people usually see when they are down at the beach with a bright light and the ocean you know not mm -hmm. those beautiful colors that i need so that is definitely a, a challenge to, to I keep i think you are an artist uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah or an athlete, a photographer, everything, because you have to <laughs> capture that perfect moment. In a, wow. in a very short moment. I was yeah. about to say that you are still an artist through your photography yeah. and masterpiece. And maybe for your next target, you can go to North Bali here in North Indonesia Bali. because you can probably get the change to take the picture of dolphin jumping during sunrise. Oh, please. Maybe, maybe, please I don't do. know. But I we we suggest that place, North Bali in Bali province, Indonesia. All right, Terence, <laughs> since you are... Yes, since you are here, can you give us tips on how to capture moments with our, our phones. phones? Yes, please. This is what we got <laughs> in the studio. Share a bit about your your, your excellent um, tips for uh, us. Yeah, like I said before, the phones nowadays are so so um, high quality that you don't even need a big camera if if you're just doing uh, shoots around the house and with your family and stuff. So some advice I would do is. Um, Always shoot, try shoot on the highest quality that you can on your phone mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to move around. I mean, a lot of people are stuck down to the floor on their feet in one position when they're taking a photo of, example, a tree. Let's say you're taking a photo of a tree. Mm. Everyone stands in one 
place only. Mm. But you can move around the tree. You can go lower, you can go higher. You can try to find different angles of that tree. Mm. And you must always figure out where the light is coming from. So if you're taking a photo, mm. if okay. the light is behind the tree, it's going to be a completely different effect if the light is behind you. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, always yeah. make sure you know where the light is coming from. And try shoot at the golden hour. Um, there's always a golden hour of every day. So it's probably 30 minutes before sunset and okay. 30 minutes after sunset. Oh, that's, wow. um, okay. that's the golden yeah, hour. And yeah. 30 minutes before sunrise and 30 minutes after sunrise. There's always a golden hour of each day where the light will be at its best. Even during the day, if there's a lot of clouds, but the sun is coming through the clouds, mm. that is also a really unique um, thing that you can look out for. So. Um, when you start with your photography, always know where the light is coming from mm -hmm. and know that you're not stuck in one place. You can move around your subject and get lower and higher and get different angles of your subject. Oh my God, I don't even know how God. you got that moment without having a backlight because you're facing, your, cap, your camera is facing the sunrise right. without a backlight. Right. Wow. So the golden hour, yeah, I just knew that. Golden hour, just like 30 minutes after sunrise and 30 minutes before sunset. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Right. That's a brilliant idea. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to you can... practice after this, but okay. I need to work no more earlier, time. of course. Yeah, please. <laughs> okay, so you can, uh, we are going to practice together yeah, after yeah, this. Yeah. So we have to say goodbye to Terence first. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Terence, for thank you very much. Thank your you very experience much for with me. us and for giving us the tips. So we're going to try yes. that. We're and we're looking right forward for the jumping dolphin, please, soon. Yes, yeah, so here in North Bali. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.